All right, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna take a look at Keep Alive D and how you can use it to achieve higher availability of your home lab services. We'll mostly take a look at this through the lens of PyHole and DNS services or uh, reverse proxy services like Ingenic, but it can really be applied to any of the services you're typically running in your home lab environment. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump right in with a quick introduction to what Keep Alive D is. And uh, we'll do this with a some very, very simple diagrams. And so let's start with an overview of what it offers. So imagine for a second that you have your home lab and you're running a DNS service such as PyHole or like I said before, a reverse proxy service or something like that. In a simple home lab configuration, you may have a single instance of PyHole running on a virtual machine, a Raspberry Pi or something else. If that instance happens to go down or you need to take the host down, obviously your DNS service goes down as well. And so if you're doing this in a household environment, so for example, if you're running a DNS server for your entire house, I think we all know how that will instantly go. It'll be met with uh, a heightened awareness that the internet is no longer working or put another way, lots of yelling and screaming. And of course, if you uh, have a second DNS configured on your clients through like DHCP, that actually isn't much help either just because of the way uh, DNS clients work, but that's a topic for another day. Keep Alive D will help in these instances by offering a service where you can fail over to a backup instance of your DNS server or whatever other uh, service you are self-hosting. So let's take a look at this from a logical uh, level to see what Keep Alive D is doing. So in this simple diagram, you have one DNS server running on 192.168.3.50. And you, if you want another uh, DNS server running on another machine, say running on 192.168.3.55, again, as we've discussed, your client is will either have to know how to fail over, have both of those IP IPs configured, etc., and be able to, to detect that itself. And so this is where uh, Keep Alive D jumps in. And so the way Keep Alive D works is you're going to run it on each of the uh, server instances that you want to make highly available. And what it's going to do, again, this is a logical diagram, it's going to create a virtual router with a third IP address called a virtual IP address. So in this case, you could give the virtual router the IP address, say 192.168.3.60, and this is the IP address that would be configured in your client. Again, if you're running a DNS service, they, this might be the IP address which is configured using DHCP. So your client is always gonna try to connect to this virtual IP address of 3.60. And then with Keep Alive D running on each of these hosts, Keep Alive D is gonna be communicating with each other. The instances will communicate with each other using multicast or if you want to set it up a certain way, you can actually have them unicast to each other and they will determine if one of the hosts is down. And then if Keep Alive D determines a host is down, it will ensure traffic is routed to the correct primary host so clients don't have to change anything or will barely even notice an outage. And note, one thing I want to make clear is in this example, this is not a load balancing configuration. This is just a configuration of primary and backup. So in this simple diagram, the backup server wouldn't be taking any traffic. It would just be sitting there ready in case case of a failure of the primary host. So let's dig a bit deeper into the actual implementation. As I said, this is just logical and is not actually what's happening behind the scenes. So what's happening under the hood is Keepalize D is implementing the VRRP protocol, and there's plenty of documentation on that if you want to dig into it. But what's happening, as I said before, you have Keepalive D running on each of your hosts. The Keepalive D instances are communicating with each other using uh, either multicast or unicast to determine which hosts are still up. And then the host that is designated as the primary will advertise the virtual IP address on its interface. So as you can see in this diagram, here I have the DNS server from before, and in this case, it has IP address 192.168.3.50 as uh, the previous diagram showed. But since it is run, since Keep Alive D is running on this host in a primary state, it also has the quote virtual IP address of 192.168.3.60. And of course, over here, your clients, they are configured with that virtual IP address. So when they go to make a request to 192.168.3.60, this is the host that answers the request. Now, of course, with these Keep Alive D instances communicating with each other, if there is a failure, this backup node needs to move into the primary state. This is what it looks like which is pretty obvious. So Keep Alive D will determine that this host has failed and that this host needs to move to a primary state. And then what happens is this formerly backup host becomes primary. And now it is the one that starts advertising the IP address of 192.168.3.60 
and your clients, again, continue to operate unaware that they just switched over to a different host. And so that is kind of a super high level of what Keepal ID is doing at both kind of a, a logical level and then a little bit about what's happening behind the scenes. But I highly encourage you to go dig more into the VRP protocol if you're interested to see how this works. So what we're going to do now is walk through a high level overview of how to install Keepal ID on uh, your host and how to configure it and show you like what it looks like when it's operating and how the host fail over. Over to each other. What I've done in my Proxmox cluster here, I've set up two uh, Ubuntu server uh, tests that we will use uh, to do this. So unsurprisingly, the first step is to actually install Keepal IFD on each of the hosts, and this is what it looks like. All right, with Keepal IFD installed, that was very straightforward. So what we can do is check the status of the services and make sure they are up and running. Now, as you can see here, we have an error. Uh, that's a start condition failed. And the problem is we actually didn't set up a keep alive D configuration file yet. So that's what we're going to do now. And so what we need to do is edit the file keep alive D dot conf, which is in this path and set up a basic configuration for our virtual router instance. And so here's what we'll do. We will fire up that right now. So I'm going to set up a really simple file for you and we will put this uh, instance into the backup state to start. So I'll put the, the file uh, configuration file into the editor here and then I'll walk you through. So this is a very simple keeplive.d.conf. We are configuring uh, one VRP instance, and I just named it VI-2, actually not to conflict with another instance I'm running right now for my actual Pi hole servers. And we're gonna start this instance in a backup state, and we have to specify the interface on which this instance will be working and monitoring. And so we'll need to check this again, um, just to make sure I got the right uh, instance name. And so in a, in a second, we'll exit and take a look at that. Here you configure an ID, uh, an uh, identifier for your virtual router, I just picked the number 20 and then you pick a priority, uh, lower priority, less important. And it, it influences how the keep live D instances uh, do their voting to pick the next leader. In this case, we have very simple two node clusters. So I'm just going to pick 99 for this one. And I'm going to set a priority of 100 on the primary. And this is how often keep live D will advertise. And we'll take a look at TCP dump and you can see that in action. Next up, very simple authentication please do better in this. Then this is the most important part. This is the virtual IP address that will be advertised by the primary. And again, as I mentioned before in the diagrams, when if a backup moves into primary state, it will take on this IP address. And this is the IP address you'll configure with clients. So let me just save this real quick. And then we'll take a look at our IP configuration just to confirm I got the interface name right. And yep, there it is, ENS18, so we got that right. So what we'll do now is restart Keep Alive D and see if that configuration file worked. Yep, so we restarted Keep Alive D, and as you can see, now remember we only have one Keep Alive D instance running. We haven't configured the other machine yet. It's in the window right above us. And you can see here, it read the Keep Alive D configuration file. It started, now remember in the configuration file, we specified to start in a backup state. And what it did, it started in the backup state, then it immediately recognized that there was no uh, peer, there was no uh, master. And so it, this uh, then decided to take on the, the primary role. And so another interesting to look at thing to look at is, let's take a a look at our interfaces again because again if this instance is operating in a primary state we would expect to see that virtual IP address we configured in the keep live D configuration and remember that was 192.168.3.85 so let's take a look at that and sure enough here it is we have our original IP address that DHCP gave us and then here is the virtual IP address configured by keep alive D and just to show something else actually what we can do is shut down keep alive D and we'll show that that address goes away so we stop keep alive D it looks at IP again and there we go we no longer have that dot 85 IP address so I'm just going to restart keep alive D 
check that everything's okay. All right, perfect. So now we're gonna go over to our other instance and we'll create a configuration file over there. It's gonna look very similar. Uh, the only thing we're gonna change is we'll start this one in a primary state and change a couple other things. So let me get that uh, set up for you and we'll take another walk through it. All right, here we have the configuration for the, the primary instance, very, very similar. So we're just starting this state in master. We're gonna need to conf uh, check that the interface name is correct. The virtual router ID needs to match, so 20 on both of these. Made this a higher priority instance at 100. The same advertising interval. Credentials need to be the same. And of course the IP, uh, the virtual IP address needs to be the same. So let's save this. Let's just check our interface. And here, yep, we are in INS, ENS 18, I'm sorry, on this one. So we should be good to go. So let's start Keep Alive D on this and take a look at its status. All right, it looks like everything worked. So you can see we restarted Keep Alive D. And remember on this one, we configured it to be in the master state. And you can see it started up and it did enter the master state. And then over here on the other instance, you can see this one received uh, an advertisement with a higher priority. So this one moved into the backup state. And similarly, we can see, we'll take a look at the interfaces and we should see our virtual IP address here. And we do, 192.168.3.85. And down here, we'll no longer have that IP address. So it's pretty straightforward. So just for fun, if you want to take a look at TCP dump, you can see Keep Alive D multicasting and advertising its availability, and you can see a little bit about how it's figuring out what hosts are up and down. So we'll take a look at that real quick. And here you go, you can see the different advertisements. So the, the host 192, well, ending in 227, uh, that is one of our tests hosts. So you can see the advertisements from these Keep Alive D instances here. These other advertisements sitting on 3.50 are actually from another VRP group I have set up running my own PyHole instances in this configuration. And just to have a little more fun with this, so on the machine I'm, I'm recording this on, which is the Windows machine, I just started a ping to the virtual IP address of 3.85. So I'll show you, we can see this, this ping should continue almost uninterrupted as we kind of start and stop keep alive D host. So I'm gonna go over here and this top host was the primary. So what I'm gonna do is just shut down keep alive D on here. We'll just say stop. There we go. And if we go down here and look at the status. So this is now running in the master state and you can see in our pings, one request timed out. That was pretty good. And so I'll restart Keep Alive D over here and we'll probably see the same thing as it switches back to primary because of the priority. Actually, no blip that time. So that is a really simple introduction to Keep Alive D. Certainly enough to kind of get you up and running in your home lab environment if you wanted to do something like make a highly available PyHole instance or something similar to that. Of course, you can get much more complicated and really play around with the configurations and do some things differently and customize to keep Alive D's configuration to your own needs. So obviously there's tons of documentation and articles out there that dive into the different options of the configuration. And I highly recommend taking a look at those. Two things that stood out to me as I was looking through this is the first is configuring the criteria Keep Alive D uses to fail over. So in the examples I gave here, Keep Alive D was really just monitoring the entire host. So if keep if the host was gone and Keep Alive D was gone, it would fail over. However, like you could have a host which is up and running, but you could have a frozen, a stuck process. So imagine you had a stuck web server, a stuck reverse pro proxy, something else. And so you can set up Keep Alive D to monitor specific processes and fail over. It can monitor the output of files and fail over, et cetera. And so you can configure much more granular rules around failover, which is probably what you want in the case of like specific services, et cetera. And the other thing you can do is you can set up uh, notifications on state changes. So you can get an email, a text or whatever works for you through scripting and other extensions that you can set up in the Keep Alive D configuration. Hope that was helpful and kind of get you on a, a nice path to playing around with Keep Alive D. We'll see you next time.
All right, one more thing. I was actually wrapping up the editing of this video and I was just kind of, I was going over the comments I made right at the end there around the Keep Alive D configuration and the other things you could do around tracking more than just the host level and tracking processes, et cetera. And I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna go give this a try and see if I can get it running real quick. And, you know, again, putting it together a simple configuration was really easy. So I thought rather than leave it to you to kind of sort through the configuration files, I would show you a quick example. So we're gonna take the configuration files files I worked on before. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a simple process tracking and we're going to track the ping process and that's going to be it. So let me show you the modified configuration file. All right. So I have a similar configuration file on each instance. And so I add a new block to the file up here at the top and is the VRP track process block. And I name this block track ping. And basically the process I told the track, well, is the ping process and you give it a weight value and what happens is when keeplivd detects that the ping process is no longer working it decreases the priority by this value so you see we have the priority set here to 100 so if it sees that ping is no longer running it's going to decrement the priority and that's going to go down to 90. now on our other instance here on our other instance, you can see the priority is 99. And so what will happen is if the priority goes lower, it'll force a revote and this other instance would become primary because it has a higher priority. Now you can see on the other instance, we set up a similar track ping block and then you need to, inside the VRP instance itself, put a block called track process and say track ping, just like that. And that pretty much worked for me. So I'm gonna show you what it looks like. And what I have here is I have yet another window. So we have a console window on our first host. And so we're just running a ping process. So this is up and running. And so I'm going to show you the status of Keep Alive D on both of them. All right, so let's take a look over here. We have KD1, which is where our ping process is running. Keep Alive D is up and running in the master state. KD2 is in the backup state. So let's go ahead and kill this ping process and see what happens. All right, so ping is gone. So KD1 should have picked that up. Okay, so here we go. So here was the line where it entered the master state after we started it. As soon as we killed the ping process, quorum loss for track process track ping, changed the effective priority from 110 to 100, and then it enters the backup state. Now over here, not surprisingly, it received a lower priority advertisement, so it discarded that, and it decided to enter the master state. And so let's just check uh, the IP addresses. So this should have our advertised IP of 3.85, and it does. And this should not, and it doesn't. Perfect. So let's restart the ping process, and that was on KD1, and let's see what happens. So we'll restart that. And so let's check the status down here. This was the master. Ah, so interesting. So th this has transitioned back to the backup state. Uh, so here it sees the process restarted. It says quorum gained, and then it changed the effective priority, making it higher priority than our backup instance and it entered the master state. So anyway, quick addition to the video here. I hope that helps and just shows you another little bit you can do uh, with Keep Alive D to get more granular tracking. And with that, now we will actually uh, end the video. Thanks again. Leave any comments or questions down below.